Uh, welcome to another attire seminar hosted by HUMA, uh, the Institute for um, Humanities in Africa at the University of Cape Town. My name is Ralph Holland, and today we're hosting Sename Kofi Agbojinu, who is joining us here from uh, Togo. And uh, we're very pleased to have Sename here with us. Um, he was recommended by one of my colleagues, uh, Dominique Somda, and his work practice is really fascinating. Um, it encompasses anthropology, architecture. He has a particular interest in maker movements uh, and the application of technology to an African context and to the idea of the meeting of high and low tech. Um, and he pioneers um, a kind of a term around this, the low high tech concept. Um, so his work looks at vernacular architecture and vernacular practices. He's helped to start um, maker spaces in Togo. I've seen documentation of 3D printing projects made from available materials and appropriate technology. Um, I see a mention as well that we can ask Tsunami more about, about running for president, I think, in 2025. Uh, so we'll ask you more about that. And uh, Tsunami is, is going to give his presentation in English, but also with French. Uh, we do host speakers um, at HUMA who speak in a range of languages. Um, and we have French speakers in our faculty who will help me because I, I speak very little French, um, uh, just just a bit. So thank you very much, uh, Saname. Um, please, please feel free to take it away. Uh, you have mentioned to me some of the work you're doing within the frame of decolonizing the future. Um, and there are many other touch points, uh, points of connection that we could discuss. So please, please take the lead. Thank you. Thank you, Ralph. Do you hear me? I can hear you. Um, yeah, maybe if you sat maybe a little bit further forward, then we'd, we'd hear you a little bit uh, more. But yeah, I can hear you. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the invitation. Um, I will not talk at all about uh, any of those projects you used to introduce me. I will more like to share some global talk about the the future and uh, some uh, intuition I have about it. But first, I would like to apologize uh, for two things. The first one is uh, the fact that, for sure, my English is my English is not good enough to uh, elaborate in profound way uh, about those important subjects, but. I don't have the, the the choice in a way, and I will do my I will do my best. And the second thing is that I didn't prepare anything. Uh, I didn't prepare absolutely anything. So I would like I would prefer to see this moment like a, a moment of conversation. So do not hesitate to bounce if you you want. Feel free. So I, I will more uh, share about you, as I say, some talks. And uh, those um, talks are for the biggest part connected to the digital society uh, we are building right now. And the first intuition I, I have is that this uh, society have the potential to create a new form of uh, imperialism or a new form of colonization, which will be uh, a very final or terminal uh, colonization because it will not be only a sort of uh, occupation of physical territory, but it will be uh, and, and uh, an occupation of the, the real itself or the reality uh, itself. So I will try to bring uh, the, the, the more example I have or the, the, the more arguments 
I can find to try to share this intuition with you. And the idea is to see what is the place of our continent, Africa, in this sort of dystopia. Um, so uh, the digital age uh, seems to proceed with two claim, two claims. Uh, the first claims are the first, in French we say prétention. The first claim is to is the fact that uh, for a long time the capitalism uh, try to convince uh, states or countries to see themselves as business, as society. And now it seems that with this digital uh, area, it is no more the strategy of the capitalism. The capitalists find it more easy to directly transform some business in countries or in states and how to have the potential uh, of a country by developing their own money, have their own system of justice, etc., etc. So it is the first, the first pretension or the first claim in this digital society uh, transforming it itself in a form of uh, final, final uh, imperialism. The second claim is that for since the beginning of the human societies, um, technology use the social structure as a model. Uh, all the technology was inspired, but uh, was inspired uh, by the, the, the human social structure, the group, uh, the family, the way that the human organize their societies. And I will explain uh, a little bit later in, in which sense social structure are technologies. And so what I'm saying is that for a long time, uh, technology was inspired and was supposed to be at the service of the social structure. And what we see uh, as new with the digital area is that the technology don't want anymore to be only inspired by the, by the social structure. The technology claim have these ambitions to become a society itself so that humans can live their worlds and live in those societies. And we will have a, a, a context in which humans don't need any more social link because they live in a digital society. society. Uh, so it is a sort of shift from the social structure which was since the beginning the basis of all the, the technology. And we have already faced this type of abstraction from the service to become an autonomous concept. We, we face it with the economy. The economy at the beginning was supposed to be a tool uh, and at the service of social, human social structure. And the economy emancipates itself for the service and become an autonomous concept, you know, taking his law in itself. And now we have the economy like a very independent concept and human uh, depending, from, depending from him. It is not anymore a tool. It is something we autonomous we, 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 we need and we are supposed to respect all his law he built this, this sort of magical uh, law he built to become, to, to continue to uh, uh, um, have the power uh, he has. So we have this sort of uh, ethereal movement also in technology uh, uh, with the digital, the digital uh, society. Um, but what is very important to see is that all those two claims I'm talking about, uh, are very pushed uh, by the metropolization. And the big tech, 
the big techs, the GAFA, as we call them, are all these uh, very hegemonical uh, um, concepts in technology worlds all see the city as the way to achieve their potentials. And so they are seeing the city in a very specific way because you have two way of seeing the city. The first way of seeing uh, uh, the, the emergence of city is to, it is the, the, the what we call in French, l'approche contractualiste. Uh, it is the approach of Hobbes or Rousseau, by example, as a, a, a French uh, a, um, thinker, which all see the city as, some, as something who creates a sort of global peace. So if you don't want to live in societies uh, in which all the groups are fighting each of them, you can agree to abandon an aspect of your freedom and come in this sort of contract, large, uh, a large shared contract, which is the city, in which you have a very global freedom shared by everybody. So the city in this vision is supposed to be a good thing. It is supposed to be the way to, to, to add more humans to humans and have a very peaceful society by developing a, a, a unique way of rules for everybody. But you have also a second way of seeing cities, which is the uh, uh, anarchy, anthropology anarchist way of seeing the cities. And in this second way of seeing cities, what is shown is that cities all over the history was forced for constraints, trying to um, uh, 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 put by force a uh, very free group of people, nomad people uh, uh, all over the world, very marginal uh, group of uh, humans by force in a unique contract in which you can control in the maximum uh, 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 the human societies. And in this second way of seeing the city, which is more problematic, uh, people are supposed to be in some cas, you know, some cas logic, some logical uh, box, and city is supposed to be an accumulation of boxes, you know. Uh, uh, and, and it is this second uh, approach of uh, erection of cities, uh, the digital world, as it is uh, uh, um, managed right now, seems to have adopted. And they really see it as a way of um, realizing the maximum of the potential of the digital societies. And of course, uh, it is a mercantile uh, uh, way of seeing the world because uh, you can sell technology, uh, you can develop and sell technology to individuals, but if you sell technology at the scale of the city, you can multiply uh, in a very interesting way uh, your revenue. So the efforts right now in this capitalism dominated by the digital company is to push people in the cities. Because when you are in the cities, you can be controlled. Uh, in, the in the industrial uh, uh, um, uh, time, uh, the the capitalism or the force of control or dominating or exploiting people are used to push people to factory. Because when you are in the factory, uh, you can be by the same uh, effort uh, used uh, uh, the, 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 the tool, which is the factory can 
take your, uh, your forces of work so they can explore, uh, exploit it, can exploit you, but they can also control you. You are on the eye of the surveillance, the global surveillance, when you are in the factory. So all the effort was to push people in the factory. But in the new society, uh, in building right now, which is the digital societies, we don't want people to be in the factory. We want people to be in their house because when you are isolated in a boxes, in your own houses, uh, uh, it is the only one way now the capitalism can exploit you because the capitalism in, is right now a digital capitalism exploiting uh, uh, the data. So we need people to be in their house on a computer, on, uh, on a technical device. Uh, and it is also the way to, con to uh, control you and for them to make you in a sort of surveillance uh, uh, dispositives. So the movement right now is to build more and more uh, uh, urban societies in which the, the, uh, the, um, the links, the social links are more and more uh, fragile so that you can be on your computer in your own apartments and uh, uh, be and participate by that in the global uh, digital and global uh, capitalism uh, societies. So what is the, the connection with uh, Africa? Uh, as all of you know, the, the biggest cities in the future will emerge in this continents, in our continents. And this dystopia of uh, digital societies to make more and more atomized societies and more and more individual societies uh, for helping this new economy to become global and hegemonic uh, needs uh, our continent to play the game. And most of those big tech have identified that it is in Africa that this fight will take first place. And if we, the, the African future cities become uh, those accumulation of box, which is the new way of seeing factory, they will win in Africa, but, but they will win globally because uh, one citizen on six in the world will be in Africa. And in 2050, we will have one woman on four, which will be uh, uh, in Africa, uh, in this continent. So uh, African people cannot continue to be innocent uh, uh, from this, about this dystopia or this strategy to use the continent as the place with the, uh, the, the future uh, uh, of uh, the capitalism will first uh, be, should, should first be waned before become uh, uh, global. But what is more interesting in that is uh, African can be the way or the new frontier, but it is also can propose a sort of very interesting resistance to this program. And uh, uh, I would like uh, to explain that, to talk first about the, what, I, what I'm, I'm, I'm saying at the beginning, seeing the social structure, the social group as a technology. In fact, the very first technology humanity developed was the link. So the, the very first technology was human augmented but it is not a human augmented with technology in his body uh, or a human augmented in the smart city because the smart city is a human augmented with all device around me uh, as a prosthesis, And it is not anymore you, 
routing. It is algorithm routing for you when you are in the smart city. You don't need to talk. It is your data who talk for you. You don't need to feel things with your interface, your physical interface, because you have a lot of captor in your home who feel if it is cold and close all the door for you. And you don't need to move because you have drones who, who come and bring you all you need. So it is this idea in the smart, the smart city is the uh, achievement of the, the, the very final uh, 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 moments of seeing the human augmented as someone who, which, which is reduced, uh, fixed, staying at one place in his chair and having the technology around him who do everything uh, for, for, for him. But the very first technology was, as I'm saying, also a human augmented, but it, is, it was human augmented by human. So uh, our elders and the very old uh, uh, traditional society understand that being numerous and having more and more people help to do things quicker and better. So the social structure was seen as a technology and human societies develop very complex and very interesting uh, sub, uh, subtility uh, uh, and raffinement. Very... Dominique, do you want to translate? As, uh... Yeah, I think it's the same word in, in English, right? So, so tell I think, I don't know, I wouldn't say better. <laughs> okay. So you, you, you have a lot of complexity in human structure. If you are, you are anthropologist, you can see it. Very, very, very profound refinements in uh, human structure, the group, the tribal society, etc. But you have only complexification in digital technology. And if I have the time, I will, I will explain it. So the group was the first technology developed by human societies. And, it, and this technology have a very interesting aspect is that uh, uh, you cannot program it in an, as an, uh, an obsolescence programmed uh, spirit. If you if you use a hammer too much, the hammer is uh, 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 will have at some moments it will it will break. You know, and all the technology you, you use often become less less performant or less powerful. But the human structure, the more you use it, the more it becomes stronger. So it is not it cannot be ups program for an obsolescence, you know. And as the digital technologies uh, try to replicate the way the human structure are working, the danger is that they come and erase all the potential of the human structure. And this potential of the human structure is in a way patrimonialized in Africa. We are one of the last test area in the world where the societies are not in this final uh, uh, achievement way of atomization. You know, we, are, we still have a lot of subsidies, a lot of refinements in the way we collaborate, the solidarity, the way of uh, articulating the, 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 the human structure and the social structure and the link, uh, seeing the link. So the danger with the digital world uh, coming in Africa is in the potential of the ha he, he, its half to erase all these uh, social resources we still have. Uh, uh, for giving you an example, uh, me, I live in Lome, and if, by example, I have some urgency, uh, I take Often the, the, the example of my daughter having some illness, I need to bring her to hospital. And if I don't have a car, I just have to go outside in my neighborhood and ask any of my neighbor to help me bring her to the hospital with his car. And everybody in the neighborhood, in the neighborhood 
will fight for having this honor to help me. Uh, not because uh, in my neighborhood, people are the best people in the world or not because Africa have the best human on the world, but because by doing that, my neighbor know that he creates an account uh, uh, on me. And the day he will need also a help, he can come to me and I will have the, uh, the uh, I, 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 I am supposed to help him back. Or he can also come to anyone in the neighborhood as the neighborhood is connected and asking for help. People will help him because they know that he helped me. So this social structure is what I mobilized often a few years ago. But now, and by doing that, we have a neighborhood who is more and more coherent more and more uh, strong because we all help each other. But now if I have a problem and I need a car uh, to go somewhere quickly, what my first uh, reflex is to go on an app and, and a call for a drive using the equivalent of Uber we have, we have here. And by doing that, maybe I, I have more performance in what I want to achieve, <laughs> goes and yes, <laughs> but I neg neg neglect another technology I have in my, in my possession. And by neglecting more and more, those technology will come to a point that this technology will take, will lose all his efficiency, and we will achieve in this stage the potential of uh, uh, this dystopia of seeing the city as an accumulation of isolated people, because when you are isolated, you, you consume more and more. If you are in a group, you don't need to have all the device, because if someone, only one guy have a device, the group can pass it one to another. But if you are in a, at, uh, in a structure uh, with a very high level of atomization, for each of you, you need to have all the device because you don't talk to the to the to the to, to the others. So it is the challenges we have right now uh, is, is a little bit caricatural to, to say it like this, but to resist to this uh, technological city proposed from the the Silicon Valley, and just maybe to to finish and let you maybe. Uh, uh, ask question or launch a conversation. I will, uh, what is very uh, 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 maybe more interesting is that uh, 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 we face from the West, we, we, inherit, we inherited from the West an history of abstraction, uh, which puts all the traditional societies in the world, all the organic way of seeing human societies in the world in crisis. And it is something who come from a very specific history, which is the European history, but become global. It is not the software of uh, all the humanity. And these things came from the modernity in the uh, European history. With the modernity, the European history makes some some cuts, first a cut in the natural structure, in the liana, and then make a cut in the human structure, in the link. So the first cut is what, what was theorized by uh, Descartes and what uh, we call now naturalism, is this idea to Descartes share uh, seeing uh, human societies are enslaved in the natural structure, in the biospherical structure. And by saying that the human societies need to leave the natural structure and build their structure so that they can have the power on the natural structure and don't, don't link anymore or not be entangled anymore in the natural structure, but 
uh, 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 take their emancipation of the human the natural structure. And he theorized that like, as a very uh, a very way of human to realize them to realize their own potentials. Uh, and humans are not supposed to live in nature and to link with nature. They need to build what we call a civilization to be humans. So it was the first rupture. I don't know if you say rupture in English. It's the first rupture, uh, uh, a disorganical rupture, uh, uh, in which we inherit from the, the, the European history. The second one was a rupture with the link, with the uh, uh, um, human structure. And this rupture was modelized on the first one. So after saying that women should leave the natural structure, the European thinkers of modernity says that human should emancipate itself from the group structure, from the social structure. And you need to be individual to achieve your potential. By staying in a tribal way of seeing the world, you are, you are not really emancipated, you are not free. So you need to cut also all the link with all the humans and realize your, 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 your full potential. And this second disorganical uh, rupture was a lot uh, alimenté, uh, nourished by the arts, uh, the economical uh, uh, theory, uh, the, the modern economical theory itself, seeing the world as uh, uh, naturally as uh, um, a dispositive of fighting, of people fighting each other, uh, etc. So you have two levels of abstraction, two ethereal movements uh, in the history. The first was the abstraction from the nature. And the second one was an abstraction from the human structure to have a very atomized uh, 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 societies. And we are facing a third moment of abstraction with technologies decided to be any more only true or not obey only uh, to the uh, logic of, in French we say auxiliary uh, tools, but become autonomous and create their own log logic. And at some point, if those three levels of abstraction coalesce, and we have some elements of this conjunction right now, and we experiment this conjunction during the quarantine uh, in the pandemic crisis, if this conjunction came and these three levels of abstraction find a way to become coherent, we will leave the real as we know it right now for a new real, which will be a sort of achieved artificial, the, the achieved artificial or the final artificial. And it is this final artificial uh, which is the, uh, 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 the new form, in fact, of colonization we are facing uh, uh, right now, which is not only a colonization of physical uh, elements, but the colonization of the real itself by artificialize everything, the, the nature, the interaction, and also the truth. So you have this philosophy of separation built by the West during the modernity epopee, which is now in, embedded in the technology itself. And we need to develop a counter proposition uh, as philosophy, which will be a proposition of entanglement ethics to fight this uh, uh, global or systematic or uh, uh, holistic separation movement we are, we, are faced, we are facing right now. And my intuition is that maybe the West is, is, was gone too far in the idea of separation and it will, it, will, it will not be possible for the West to 
create this revolution of entanglement. And it will be the responsibility of society who are not completely disorganized uh, uh, in the sense that they have, they still maintain some organicity in their way of seeing the world to create this counter revolution and fighting uh, uh, the global separation ethics uh, uh, we, 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 are we are facing. And just for finish, just to give some intuition about what will be the, uh, the tool we can use in this counter revolution, I think we should mobilize and we will need to mobilize a resource of imagination because all the separation philosophy and all the modernity is lead with a paradigm, which is the paradigm of the profits, the capitalism. We need to build a new paradigm in which what is valuable is not what we can measure with a uh, number, but adding some new value in the contability of everything and give more and more value to some elements who are not maybe uh, easier to uh, for the paradigm we are in right now, which is the, look, the global software of the world, which is not can be measured with numbers, you know. And it is uh, uh, Vandana Shiba who said, a, new, uh, a woman who puts a seed uh, uh, in the ground on, on the soil, uh, don't appear in any uh, accountability or any contability in the world we are right now. But a man who cut a tree with the, the, the machine of using number can understand it. He can see the value, this, mach this machine can see the value of this action. And most if it, he, he, cuts, he cuts the tree with a machine, we, we, we have some production of energy we can understand in the paradigm of profits. But we need to understand that uh, we, need to, we need a woman to put a soil in the, in, in the, in, uh, a, a seed in the ground before having a tree to, to, to cut. And how can we measure also the value of those, uh, uh, um, those moments? We are not seeing the value right now because they are Invisibi uh, and so they are not too far of our calculation, or they are just not under. Uh, we can just understand it with the paradigm we have right now. For but for building a new paradigm, we need to use uh, some uh, uh, resource of imaginaries. We need to mobilize new ar archive, and not be only dependent about the West archive, and we need to see. Uh, we need to learn from other geography and see how traditional organized uh, organic societies develop contracts in which the uh, tool structure is entangled with the human structure and the human structure in, is entangled in the natural structure. How do they build these three level of uh, have a, a very coherent way of uh, linking and use those uh, uh, resources of imaginary to build new cosmogony for our age and new transversal cosmogony, even uh, uh, digital or uh, technological area, technological age uh, uh, cosmogony. Uh, one other intuition in this uh, desire to fight the global philosophy of the separation is that we will need a new feminine revolution because uh, uh, instinctively people who are the keeper of the liana and the link are in those traditional societies uh, women uh, and as we need to fight things uh, by the the, 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 the elements, the fragilized to become strong. We need also, I think, to push this revolution or create space for this new uh, uh, feminist revolution. And just to finish, uh, uh, I think the continent itself should have to liberate more energy 
and we can liberate all the potential of energy we have uh, staying in the border we still have right now. Uh, 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 the young energy cannot achieve his potential considering that he is uh, limited by some border. Uh, the young energy needs to have all the space of the continent to become very, to, to, to feel itself very free and achieve his potential. And of course, the tool of this dystopia um, painting, which is the city, will not respect the borders. We will have some regional cities. We are talking, by example, uh, uh, of a unique city from Lagos to Abidjan. So we need to anticipate this future and liberate the energy uh, uh, it, it needed to correct uh, uh, all the issue we can face by going to to this to, to this form of dystopia. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Sanami. That was um, uh, a very powerful uh, analysis, and a lot of uh, that resonates with me. Um, in fact, my mind is overflowing with uh, ideas uh, after, after listening to you. And I just want to mention a few things in response and then also open it to the, to the other participants. But uh, one, one image when you were talking about the woman planting the seed is the you know, terminator seed, you know, the um, bioengineered seeds that are designed not to be reproducible. So they create a plant that won't produce more seeds. And um, Monsanto does this so that you have to keep buying the seeds from them. Uh, so they take away one of the most fundamental aspects of a natural being like a plant. And because of profit, they remove that capability. And there's a lot of concern about what will happen if terminator genes enter the uh, enter the system, but also just to identify, I think when you talk about the individual and society, or what tendencies technology has, those are very fundamental tensions that we keep trying to negotiate. And when you talked about um, asking your neighbors for a lift instead of uh, using Uber or another service. It made me think about how, you know, by using Uber, you can have a um, a service without attachment, without obligation. So you no longer have this obligation to an individual, um, and you can specify with Uber that you don't want to talk to the driver, even for example. So there are these ways of depersonalizing, atomizing people to remove obligation, but then also to remove the benefits of those networks. And just one one thing to mention though is that you know that Airbnb has a predecessor in Couchsurfing.com. So Couch Couchsurfing.com was a free community that used the internet to share homes so that you could go and stay in someone's home in another country for free, and then you could go and stay with someone else because it was an exchange but it was enabled by the internet. And so I think part of what I can see is also how the digital domain um, went from the 1980s or 90s until now, starting out with a lot of hope as a free space in which people could share things using this technology. And like everything else, it's been brought into the logic of the market and of profit. And then the question stands of, how much, as you say, is embedded in the technology that leads to those outcomes, and how much is the technology capable of resistance of being used for community or being used for resistance? And that's another one of those central tensions. What, what is in the technology and what is the technology expressing of the politics of the society that uses it? So yeah, just some, 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 some input from, from, from me in response. Thank you very much. Um, is there anybody here who would like to, to participate? I do see that, um, just to pick out one person, 
uh, Ziad Borat is a South African uh, science and technology and uh, the politics of technology scholar based in the US. Um, and I, he's here, it's early in the morning for him in LA. Um, um, I'm gonna ask him if he wants to unmute if he is online here. Hi everybody. Uh, thanks Ralph for, uh, for that introduction and thanks as well to Tsunami for a fascinating uh, discussion. Um, I, was, I was really moved about, you know, the, the ways in which, especially since I, I'm, a, I'm South African, you see he is my, actually my alma mater, Tsunami, I'm really interested in the ways in which Africans, in particular African communities, uh, can form collective and individual level resistances to the and I use this word that I that that the dispositif of sur uh, surveillance um, in the kind of Althusserian sense um, and how you see that materializing on the day-to-day -day basis particularly as we have become enmeshed not only I think in um, uh, Global capitalism's throws, but uh, other other ideologies as well. You know, when I'm I'm, I'm thinking about, for example, uh, influences from uh, from China in particular, that we're that the, one of the one of the motifs is that Africa has become a kind of a scramble place for 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 the new for the new bipolar hegemony. I'm interested in your thoughts on that in in our positionality as respect this kind of broader political economy as it relates to digital society and technology. Thank, thank you, Ziad. Um, would you like to respond to Nami? Yeah, it is uh, uh, it is um, uh, I don't have uh, <laughs> any uh how to say it any ready-made solution for that i think we need yeah. to develop new laboratory uh, new laboratories and it is by example what we are doing with the fct project i manage in Dome, uh, with this idea to to say that uh, it is a question of paradigm and the paradigm is something which is uh, very powerful uh, and the mm. The, the the characteristic of the paradigm is something who mobilize you, but you don't even have, you don't even know that you are thinking because you are in this, you, you, you have this, uh, uh, you, dep you are dependent on this, uh, uh, this construction. So we need to shift the paradigm and build a new construction. And it is very difficult to, to do it. Uh, and, uh, for directly the solution, the device, talking about technology huh? uh, and all this uh, technology we are using, maybe we can shift the paradigm by uh, just moving the uh, laboratories from the very uh, hermetic Silicon Valley way of seeing them to the neighborhoods in Africa and letting people develop themselves their technologies. And technologies are enough open today for having this utopia of saying that each neighborhood develop his own technology. And mm -hmm. by making that, by doing that, by having a network of laboratories, uh, grassroots laboratories, and giving them the capacity, uh, allow them to impact their environment with the technology they develop themselves, you can civilize a little bit uh, the digital uh, uh, age because you have technology who are not directly in conflict with the social structure of technology because it was developed by people who are connected one to another and are supposed to be at the service of this uh, uh, connection. So it is an, ans an answer be between right. others, but I think uh, we can have more and more solutions like this if we first explode the paradigm. Uh, we didn't even authorize, authorize ourselves to think about those type of radicalism or those type of revolution because we thought that the paradigm we are sharing right now is something who cannot be moved. So we need to have this capacity of 
to say that it is just a paradigm. We can change it and seeing the world in a very different way. And we have a very good opportunity to do that with the crisis uh, we face with the pandemic. But we didn't take this opportunity because it was in the, in the history, the best moment to decide to leave completely the old paradigm and build a new paradigm of the capacity of the, the communities to, to become more, again, organic and not have this sort of global city uh, with specialized place to produce technology for all the right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Saname. Thank you. Thank you, Ziad. Um, yeah, I'm, I, I, was, I was interested in your mention of the openness of the technology because it does, um, it does draw attention to how a technology can be designed with more or less openness, you know, more or less adaptability, um, and that we can we can critique individual technologies according to how open they are, um, and and that there are advocacy groups that try to keep technologies open, even. Uh, even on the level of a appliance for your home, like can you fix your vacuum cleaner or can you open your phone or can you fix your car yourself? Um, and, you know, there, there are, you know, movements to design within. I think there is a, there would also be, it would also be interesting to drill down into what kinds of technologies um, are more capable of resistance or can uh, carry those social values that you're interested in? And how would you set about highlighting those technologies? Thank you. I agree. Um, <laughs> good. Um, yeah, and I think that yeah, with the work you do with maker spaces for example and yeah. the idea of hackers that's part of that paradigm do we have any other um input from the uh participants audience in this uh in this room if you use the uh, reactions button to put up your hands then i can see you and ask you to um unmute so if anybody would like to to ask a further question, you'd be welcome. Ralph, you have a hand. There's a hand in the room from Oriol. Oh, right. Okay, great. Thank you, Ori Oriol. <laughs> um, cool. Yeah, can you hear me? I, I think my camera yeah. on my phone's not uh, working. Well, it says I can't access it. Um, but I'll just carry on. I think it's a privacy thing. Um, yeah, I think it's a really interesting discussion. Um, what, I, what really stood out to me was the last one, uh, one of the last points um, around uh, kind of communities developing their own technology. Um, I feel like that's maybe over time, it, that, that's, that's what will start happening because globalization has been a bit like that in terms of, you know, um, uh, creating a more of a central, well, not centralized, but a kind of yeah, westernized world that controls the, the paradigm or the culture, and then that's filtered in that way. And, and technology works in the same way. It's, it's um, kind of built by these big empires, and then everyone slowly starts to, to adopt it, and, and over time becomes kind of the central, central aspect, a bit like yeah, globalization, how that worked out. Um, and then industrialization also is, is it's also not very accessible. Um, and that's why the kind of, I guess, the colonization and, and the Western world was able to dominate in that space, um, uh, you know, over, the, over, uh, over some time. And um, when technology becomes more accessible to developing tools for yourself in the way that it's, it's, it's more affordable, uh, well, not affordable, but accessible in a way. Um, I feel like that's that's where things could potentially 
change because I feel like it'll always be be there now that it's been developed. It's a matter of how to to rethink it to be less less centralized and and more more decentralized to communities and their and their needs and and um, and their culture and, and that kind of thing. Thank you, Ariel. Um, Saname, any um, any further comments that you uh, that you'd like to make or observations? Uh, you're on mute there. Um, are you are you running for president? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's amazing. That's good. Um, I think you'd make a great uh, you'd make a great president. Let's see um, let's see what uh, what opposition you'll come up against, and it would be interesting to see how technology might play a role in your campaign as well. How you could make positive use of it. Um, I mean, I think just I'm thinking about again about your example of the asking your neighbors for a ride and how you you pointed to automation as being one of I think also one of the central uh, features of technology now is to automate. So now the blockchain offers a smart contract instead of a human to human agreement. You know, and there's this kind of promise that technology might take care of all the difficult things because it is also difficult doing that human to human um, agreeing and negotiating. So, um, so yeah, there's, a, there's, there's something interesting there, I think, about automation and the potential of technology. Yeah. Um, yeah, how far you can you can make it serve your ends. So I'd be really interested to see how you will how you will be using technology to instill greater humanity and connection uh, rather than detracting from it. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Anabe. Thanks for spending time with us. Thanks for sharing your thoughts.